Okay. So, we're going to talk about something that is often debated and is very polarizing in the United States. We're going to talk about gun control. Um, my opinion on gun control is kind of twofold. A, it's unconstitutional. B, it doesn't work. We're going to go over a lot of reasons why. So, all of my data that I'm going to use to support my information I got from the 2014-2015 FBI firearms database. So if you ever want to fact check or just go in and look at stats, that's where all this info came from. Um, I'll start out by what the Second Amendment actually is. So from the Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia, militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It's pretty straightforward. It says the population has the right to defend itself at all costs. That's not only for somebody's going to break into your house, but it's the government is going to inflict itself on its people. That's why it has to be in the Constitution by legislation. Secondly, why it's important to me. Um, as we talked about in introductions, I did eight years in the, in the Army, and anybody who's in the military does an oath. Uh, the oath says, I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Does it say against some rules? or is it the Constitution? It's about what the country was founded on. So, in the United States, there's roughly 321 million people. About 321 million people. How many guns do you think there are in the US? 300 million guns. 300 million. So that's like 94% in reference to the population. It's actually about a third of the population that owns guns, but number to number, it's almost 94%. So what we have here is 82 dots. Each one of these dots represents 31,000 specific incidents of a time, according to the FBI, that a gun was used. Whether that means it was brandished, it was fired, someone was hurt, period. So it's a total of 24.8 million incidents. How many of those do you think were homicides? Take a guess. Um, this one. This is homicides, suicides, accidental death, accidental injury. These are all self defense. All of them. So let's say, what does that really mean? 200,000 rapes a year are prevented by firearms. 200,000. People say, well, what about all these guns? They're the issue. Let's look at Chicago as an instance. Chicago, you have no gun rights. None. According to the US Census, it is the most deadly city in the world. You are most likely to get shot and killed in Chicago than anywhere else on earth. And there's nowhere within city limits is it legal to own a gun. Nowhere. Kennesaw, Georgia, on the other hand, 2009, I believe. I didn't check the date on that. The mayor instituted a law where every home is required to own a firearm. Within 365 days of that law being passed, crime is down 90%. 90% just by a law saying that the citizens had to have a gun. And uh, I'm trying not to be too political, but Democrats say that let's just ban the guns and it won't be a problem. Well, the UK did that. There's no gun ownership out of sight of long rifles that are used only for hunting in the UK. Violent crime in the UK is 197% of what it is in the US. They just use kitchen knives. Makes sense, right? So, to, to kind of to round out what I'm saying here, we're going to do a little role playing. Edward, would you mind coming up here for a second? Sure. Sam, you're going to be a bad guy. You're going to pick one of us as a target to 
You're going to rob one of the two of us. Who are you going to pick? I'll pick Edward. Why are you going to pick Edward? Because you're talking. <laughs> okay, we're, we're walking down the street. Why do you pick Edward? He's smaller than you. Okay, now Edward has a gun. Who do you pick? Still you're, still gonna, you're still going to pick him with a gun or me without a gun? I think I can take him. I can't take you. <laughs> if he has a gun and you don't? I don't know that he has a gun, though, do you? Is he going like this? Yeah. Well, then I'll take you, I guess. <laughs> and my point is that. That's all I got. Any questions? All right. So you mean these smaller people using gun more than big people? Or? No, no, no. I'm just saying the, the likelihood of a criminal to choose someone as a target, knowing they have a gun, is so much less. Kennesaw, Georgia was a prime example of that. Karma down 90% just because criminals knew that people had guns. It wasn't that they were using them. It was just that they knew they were there. Exactly. Um, another stat that I didn't put on here is three out of four um, convicted felons were polled about if you know someone has a gun, are you still going to interact with them in the same way? Three out of four say no. They're immediately going to pick someone else. Question. Yeah. Dot, what does each dot represent again? 31,672 incidents. 31,672. So if you combine homicides, suicides, accidental injury, and accidental death, you get a total of 31,672 in 2015. Okay. With so all those other ones were. So somebody robbed a house, or somebody tried to get raped, or somebody tried to get a car yep. So, uh, which of the dots uh, take into account, like, I'm robbing a convenience store and I pull the gun? You said, these are all the incidents, the grandish you got. Is that in the square, or is that under that one dot? I think it's in the square. Isn't it? So, people who use a gun in, in the committing a crime. The actual gun deaths, I believe, was, I think it was like 11,600 and something. So we're not just talking about this. We're talking about right. anybody who even just brandishes a gun yep. in the commission of a crime. Yep. Okay. Anytime a gun is present in a report, period. It's in that one dot? No, no, no. It's all of these. All these. But right. that one dot. But the one is, dot is crime related. Result of a it's all homicide. crime related, yeah. homicide, suicide, or I'm robbing the grocery store and, I'm, and I pull a gun. I may not kill anybody, but that's in that one dot. What's even crazier is, of that, the number of legally registered firearms is only like four percent the rest of them are all illegally unregistered or illegally acquired and stolen whatever what, what's the percentage of um registered guns for the other 81 dots i don't know okay okay um so it pays to have a gun i mean nobody's not going to know you have a gun unless you put like a beware of dog sign out well, no, beware I, mean, I have a gun yeah but if legally speaking, if you say it's illegal for you to have a gun, then criminals are going to be like, well, they don't have guns. But if they say it's legal for you to carry a gun anywhere, anytime, any place, they're going to be a little more hesitant to be like, I don't know if I want to mess with that guy. He might be carrying it. I wouldn't think if everybody didn't have a gun on that. Say again? I wouldn't think if everybody didn't think that. Exactly. Some people might take that as a challenge. And some people might, and, and you can't help the crazy either. You can't help the guy who, you know, wakes up one morning, flips out, and decides to go shoot up his high school or a movie theater or an yeah. elementary school. Which, you know? don't get me wrong, I don't. it's not that I don't think there's a problem with the way guns are handled in legislation. They're just trying to attack it from the wrong direction. It need, needs to be regulated through people, not through the guns. Background checks, mental health, classes. You Make people take classes. Check. Sure, yeah. You agree with registration? Yes. Okay. I mean, some people, some gun right owners are like, I don't have to tell you anything. If I have a gun, no. I, I have no problem with accountability. Okay. I'm all for it. Okay. But it's not about the guns, it's about the people. Yes. I, I, I <laughs> what do you think of the loophole of selling guns at gun shows? It, they should be the exact same as if you were doing it at a gun store. Okay. All right. I, I mean, I'm just asking questions yeah. for things for the class to think about. Um, and what, what in Texas, some states have laws where, for example, um, if Sam broke into my house in the middle of the night, why, why would you do that? Because you're a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam broke into my house in the middle of the night, and 
breaks into my house um, because he wants to steal my PlayStation. You can shoot him dead. And depending on the state. In Texas. In Texas, I can shoot him dead if he's in my house. Or your car. If he's in my car or my house. <laughs> the minute he has my PlayStation and he is on my patio or in my front yard and I shoot him dead, they bring me up on burglary. Yep. And Maryland, you just have to. So they have property. Do what? Or uh, Maryland, you just, he would just have to go by the property. And, and I can shoot him? Uh, there has I to be him. Huh? There has to be him in front of Maryland. Oh, well, yeah, but. It can't just be. Property. It can't be like he's running away with my PlayStation. Right. Bam, 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 and I shoot him in the back. Same thing, like in Maryland. I'm just um, saying. So it, yeah. there, there are laws about this. Yeah. So different it's states, <laughs> different, different states see this differently. So if I come down the stairs and he's standing there with my PlayStation and he's not about to do anything, but in my mind, if I think he's going to throw it at me, I can shoot him. Right. But if he's about to go out the front door with his back to me and I shoot him. In Texas, it's not murder. Here it is. So, Here it is, and it's because he's not posing a threat. You cannot use lethal force to protect property. Not in every state. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Something that I think people should consider also, just food for thought. In India, you can like shoot somebody for self-defense, but not for like you know somebody stealing or something. Right, and that, that's in the United States. That's the case too. So if I felt threatened, he's standing there holding my PlayStation. I think he's about to throw it at me, and I shoot him, and I shoot him in the chest. Okay, I, I would have a leg to stand on in court because I'm afraid for my safety, he's going to hurt me, my self defense, I'm going to shoot him. You just have to but if he's about to go out my front door and, and I shoot him in the back, there's no way I can say that he, I, I'm defending my safety. There's also lots of laws about if you shoot, your intent is to incapacitate your opponent. If you, like, I shot him in the arm, well, guess what? You're going to jail. Right. Um, a point that I wanted to mention, I forgot to put in my. Isn't that what you want to do, though? No, you, no. It, you can't shoot. You can't shoot somebody. You just can't shoot somebody, you know, to protect property, ever. You can only do it in self-defense. I mean, if, if you're defending yourself, mm -hmm. don't you want to shoot them in the arm? No. Like? No, you want to take them out. No. So if you if you feel imminent threat, you can put two caps right in your chest. Okay. <laughs> you're you're under stress. Do you want to aim away from the biggest part of your target? Center mass. Or do you want to aim for the biggest part of your target? I'm aiming for well, the biggest. Right, part of your target. right. Okay, in, you in your. Friend, I don't care where I hit him. I just want to. I'm going to aim at the biggest part of his body, center mass. Right and on you're the not going to. Let me aim. No. You come out and shoot till they quit movement. Right. Period. Exactly right. But, last year, what was a big law that was passionate, passed nationally that was a big deal? Not about guns, just in general, in the United States. Something that was legalized nationwide. Marijuana? Not yet. No, not nationwide, you're right. Not nationwide. Gay marriage. Oh, okay. Federally, really. it was determined that the states could not regulate their own laws and say, we can and we can't. Federally, they said, gay marriage is legal. Which is not at all in the Constitution. But the right to bear arms is, and is still regulated at the state, city, county, and municipal level. That's a question I was going to ask you. Not to be state, but to be federal, every state has to be complaining against the same law. It's either the right to bear arms or it's not the right to bear arms. Well, it's the it's Constitution. So, and and that's, shades of gray. <laughs> well, and, 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 and that's where, you know, this topic is not about gay marriage, but going back to gay marriage. It is in the Constitution because it's life, liberty, you know, and and so some people would say I have I have that right, my my freedom, my right to marry who I want. It is my right, you know. You're saying it's not it doesn't say specifically in the Constitution, and other people argue you don't say specifically you're gonna own an Uzi either, you know. I, I'm not saying I got it. I'm right? opposed I'm just saying, to I'm not, not arguing, but yeah. but it's just you know you're right. It's it, a lot of this comes down to interpretation, and that's why we have a Supreme Court, albeit a Supreme Court that is has its hands tied right now because we only have eight justices. I think anything that has to do with several civil liberties and rights should be at the federal level. I agree. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. I, and it has to be because our constitution is based on that. Everybody, no matter what state you live in, like one state cannot regulate that, um, you know, uh, white men who like to play video games, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> must pay extra money, you know? Let me stop this before it's... 